Hey guys, so here's a small sneak peek about the new course that we just released, the mechanical creature. We're going to be releasing some of these videos for free so that you guys can check it out. And if you like it, make sure to use the code down here because for the first five days of this release, which should be from May 2nd all the way to May 6th, you're going to be able to get a course for 90% off. So enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. Today we're going to start with a very, very, very quick block. And I want to show you a very nice little trick here that we can use just to get an idea of where things are going to be. It's a very, like, this is the, the most basics of blockings. We're not even going to create cylinders and stuff. We're going to be creating, uh, using another tool called the Create Polygon tool. So Control Shift to add it to our shelf. I'm going to click this guy right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the, like, main, like, shape or, or form of this like rib cage like that. And then we're going to go to the top view and we're going to extrude this thing to the side until we get roughly the, the shape that we want, which is about there. You can see that this middle points go in. So I'm just going to push them in if needed. And that is it. As you can see, we've created the very basic blocking of the chest. I'm going to delete this face. And remember that I told you that I don't like using the mirror button. Well, to access the mirror function, by the way, let me turn on this thing, which is the shortcuts. You're going to press shift, shift, right click, and then you're going to go mirror. And you're going to mirror this on the X axis, negative, combined with the original 0 0.001 on costume merge threshold. This is very important. Make sure you have the settings at any time that we're going to be doing a mirror so that things are actually welded together. We hit apply, and there we go. That's our chest. And if we take a look at the front side, should be able to get something that looks similar. I can see that the front side actually is not lined up. Let's line this up. So let me grab the image plane. Move it. There we go. And uh, this is where things might be slightly off because, for instance, I can definitely tell that we have the proper size right here. But on the front view, it looks a little bit too wide. So let's just bring this back in. And we're going to be jumping between the front view and the side view to try and find the best possible balance. Let's go back here and let's block in the next shape, which is going to be the head. So I'm going to go here with this tool right uh, here. And this is like the jaw. There we go. I'm, I want to save a little bit of time. So I'm going to do this uh, immediately with this guy right here. Like that. You can grab both these elements, control E, let's go to the front view. As you can see it's not that big like about there. I feel like either, oh, this guy's is, is on the bottom. Have to raise this thing a little bit more. So go to object mode, grab the image plane again, move this up right there. That's a little bit better, right about there. We go again to the top view. And let's take a look at the, yeah, that seems about right for the size. Of course, the eyes are gonna be on the side gonna grab these two objects, mesh display, reverse, grab this face, delete it, grab this face, delete it, grab both objects and mirror. That's gonna give us the basic shape of the head. Now I'm gonna go to the front view and you can see those are like the eyes and those are indeed cylinders. So I'm gonna add this cylinder right here. Make it a little bit bigger. Have it right there. Bring it all the way forward. Let's go to the right view. You can see the cylinders are right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey the side view more than I do the right view. That's very important. Usually the side view and the front view are the ones that we're going to be using the most. But in this case, our side view is going to be like the master, the master one. So that's the, the main one that we're going to be put, uh, like putting attention to. I'm going to grab another cylinder. Get this in here. That's going to be the, the jaw, like the jaw hinge right around there. And actually we have a lot of cylinders, so I'm going to go to the right view and I'm already going to start like placing all of them. So that's the, that's like the neck joint right there. Then I can see we have another one right here. Have some sort of like sternum, like right around there. We have another one right here, which would be like a knee. This is like the hip, okay? So we're just capturing their positions as closely as we can. And then we're gonna, of course, modify. So this one is gonna be a little bit closer to the side. If we go to the side view here, you can see how much it like pokes out right around there. Let's mirror. 
This is the sternum. I think the sternum is going to be a lot thinner. So I'm going to go with something like that. This is the, the knee. So it goes right around there. Or actually, that's like an, an elbow. Go. Go to a top view. This guy right here is the hip. Again, it's roughly that size. This is the knee. It would be roughly that size. We can grab all of these guys and mirror them to the other side. As you can see, we're building a very, very basic blocking. Now, some of you might be like, why do we need to do this? Why are we doing a blocking where we could very easily just jump straight ahead and do like the actual modeling? And the main reason is because whenever you're working in a project and uh, there's more people involved, let's say you have a client or you have an art lead, it's very important that you can show them progress. And by doing this uh, blocking, so I'm actually gonna do this case right there as well. If you can show them this blockings, it helps them visualize how things are going to look before you finish them. So if they take a look at the blocking and they're like, yeah, that looks good. I like how that's looking. I like the, the general proportions. I like the general like uh, flow of the whole thing. Then that's going to save you a lot of time later on from having to redo things. One of the things that I hate the most when I'm working on a project is moving along. I don't know, like working two, three, four, five days and then showing your client the progress that you've done so far. And then they look at it and they're like, nah, I don't like it. Let's change this. And they want to change things that are really, really uh, basic in regards to the, um, to the, to the silhouette and stuff. It's like, dude, if you could have told me that you wanted this change from the very beginning, we could have saved so much time, right? But people sometimes have a hard time visualizing things, especially people who are not into the creative industries. They have a hard time visualizing things. And even if you present them a really nice concept, they don't really know how to um, how to extrapolate that into a finished product. So by doing this, um, what's the word? This blocking right here that we're doing, it helps them visualize how things are gonna end up looking. And if they are convinced that things are gonna look fine, then you are um, you have like a green light to keep on going. It also protects you if you're working again with a client. It also protects you because imagine that. That they that you charge them X amount of money and then they're like, yeah, we don't like it. You can be like, well, you said you did like it when we were doing the blocking. So what's changed now, right? I'm gonna move these guys right here. I'm gonna extrude them, all of them at the same time. You can see that I'm gonna press W to move this right here. Of course, this guy and this guy, since they're black, we're gonna say reverse, mesh display reverse, which was one of the tools that we uh, did before. I'm gonna combine them all. Just easier to do that that way and delete this guys right here. And now when we do the mirror shift, right click and go into mirror, we're going to change world to bounding box because they're no longer on the symmetry line. And we're going to say mirror. And that's going to give us roughly the thickness of the skeleton. Now I'm going to do a second mirror, but this one is going to be a world. And that way we're going to get this thing on the other side. Um, it seems like this thing did not like mirror it properly. So I'm just going to do it again. There we go. Maybe same for that one. That one. That one. There we go. So same deal here with this uh, leg right here. We're gonna move it into position. Be like right around there. I'm gonna press Control E, W, move it a little bit to the side. Flip around the ones that are uh, black. Let's combine them just for ease of selection. Grab this guy, this guy, and this guy. There we go. And then we're going to mirror first on bounding box. There we go. And then on world. We get it on the other side. There we go. This is the hip or the, the spine. Control E. Push it out. And then I'm going to use my cut tool here to cut that face right there but from one point to the other like that so that I can grab this face and just extrude it a little bit more because that's like the sort of like the hip connection, right? I'm going to be like, give it a little bit of a, of a change there just to make it a little bit more interesting. You can grab that face and we're going to mirror on the uh, world as well. There we go. Tail, easy, just like that. 
the inner face, grab the object, and world. And uh, I think finally the last one is this neck. So we can just press Control E, move it a little bit like that. Again, delete this guy right there, and a mirror on the world. And there we go. Now you can see that uh, we're missing some sort of like contraption here. Easiest thing for blocking, just grab one of the pieces that you already have, scale it down, and reuse it. Right? Because the only thing we want to do is we want to show the uh, again the the client that we have something that looks interesting. So there's this like scapulas like pointing out right around there. So we can just grab this guy right here, make it thinner, thinner like that, and replicate the sort of like scapula that we would get like right around there. Mirror this to the other side. And there we go. So with this, we've successfully created the blocking of the character. And uh, this is going to serve for a couple of, uh, it's going to help us quite a, uh, a bit. First of all, we can actually create a, one more thing. I, I feel like the connection here might be, ah, that's fine, that's fine. So um, one thing that we can do, first of all, is uh, we can actually like send this to the rigging department. And if we promise that this is the proportions that we're going to get, they can start building a very rudimentary like skeleton and use that to to do some blockings on some not not poses but on the on the set like they can decide where the character is going to be and they can get a general idea of how things are going to look so even the simple blocking that took us 10 minutes to do is already useful for other departments in the production pipeline and that's why this is very important because they don't have to wait until we're done with the whole modeling to start like experimenting with other things um, in our case, the next thing that we're going to do before we start with the whole modeling process is I'm going to set up a render scene because one thing that we're going to be doing throughout the series is we're going to be set, uh, like saving snapshots of the progress so that we can have a, a sort of a evidence or a trail of evidence of how things are moving on. And this is our first render. This is going to be our first render or our first presentation render. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.